thank you for being the example for your children to follow. My name is James Allen. I get to talk to you today about a topic that has so much meaning for me. I'm a product of this topic, and it's about the importance of the events. How many of you right now are already filled up? You don't need an airplane to go home. You're just ready. Has this been an incredible weekend so far? Then there are a group of there are founders in the back, there are executives in the back, there are people volunteering, the marketing teams in the back. This event didn't just happen randomly. This was a group of people that came together to create this environment, to create transformation. Can we show them how much we appreciate what they did for us this weekend? Happen at these arena, this arena. 
when you see people succeeding, it can just open your mind up. So your mind gets opened up. Your mind gets changed. Because most people stay in the same place mentally. But in this arena, in this arena, your mind becomes like a fountain. Most people's thoughts don't have a fountain nature to it. Water that sits for a long time becomes stagnant, mm -hmm. then putrid, then a swamp. See, in a swamp, there's no movement. In a fountain, it's continuous movement. So I remember coming to my first international training event and I felt like, I didn't realize it at the time, see, when you're in a situation that you don't love, sometimes you can be in the dysfunction so long you don't even realize it's dysfunctional anymore. You see, sometimes dysfunction becomes normal. And I come to this event and they're talking about possibilities and freedom and residual income. I'm sitting there reading like, I paid all that money for college. How did I miss this class? <laughs> that loan shark named Sally Mae that I'm still paying. Sally, the evil witch of Indiana, that loan shark. How did I miss this class? And then started talking about all these things. That's all of a sudden my mind in the room. I'm in the room, but I'm no longer in the room. I'm in the room, but I'm out of the room. My confidence is growing, and this, this mind fountain starts. Where all of a sudden, here's the difference. Because in a fountain, water goes through, and because it's going through, oxygen hits it. So it's continuously oxygenated. So there's more purity as opposed to sitting there. So the Asian environment was the oxygen. My mind became a fountain. I started thinking, oh my God, I can do this. You see, because no matter where a person is in their confidence level, some of you came here as team trainers struggling to get customers. And we believe these things that we hear. We believe, I remember, I remember when my son was in, in pre-K. And I remember going to pre-K and I remember sitting and talking to one of his teachers and she said, ah, oh, James is just such a sweet boy. I said, ma'am, I know that that's my son, but He's not in your class to be sweet. He's in your class to learn something. So I need you to relate to him like you're gonna teach him something, not that he's a sweet boy. Does that make sense to everybody? You see, because I tell them all the time, you're brilliant. You're amazing. Don't I say that, baby? That's right. Why? There'll never be a question coming out of this household. But for some of you, that wasn't your experience in your household. You heard you weren't smart enough. And even though you heard it at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen, whatever that number is, you're 50 and you're still living in that world and that's not even true. But someone told you that you heard that at 10 years old and now at 48, you're still carrying that baggage. Well, let's sit, let me help you out. Let's clear off that from your mind. We just need to get you here so you think different. Some of you think you're not good enough. You've never made big money in your life. No one's made big money until they made big money. Mm. Someone's gonna make big money. 2,700 new millionaires will be created in the next 24 hours. 2,700 new millionaires in the next 24 hours. It's, hey, someone's got to be successful in America. Someone's got to be successful in Europe and Latin America. Someone's got to be successful in Canada. Why can't it be you? Why can't you be the one? Why you got to always watch television for somebody else living out their dream? Why can't you have your own life be a dream life and you start it now? I'm not, some people say I'm not talented enough. You know, you guys are such great speakers. Yeah, let me tell you what great speakers we are. All of you in my mind right now are in boxer shorts. <laughs> Look, I carry a pocket full of mints before I get on any stage. Why? The thing, you know, if, if, you, if you interview anyone backstage, just, I'm running laps in the back of the arena. Why? Scared out of my mind. This, I said to my sponsor, I will do this business, but don't put me in front of people. <laughs> 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 
I called this company NCA for the first week. <laughs> and a guest at a home meeting said, this says ACN. I was like, semantics. <laughs> you get the point, don't you? Residuals, okay. I like that one. Got the letters right. <laughs> There's no superstar talent. You see us up here, we're just excited. We know what this company can do for you. Some of you say, well, I'm too young. You millennials in here, you hear that you're lazy? You hear that you want everything easy? That's what you hear constantly from the media, all the millennials. They're not doing much for the economy. Let me tell you about the millennials. They're not motivated by a 60-year cubicle. That's right. That's right. 60-year cubicle. There's another way. Now, the same person that says they're lazy, I met someone that drove here from California who's 19 years old. No, they're not, not motivated. They're motivated for freedom. You hear some of you have people on the team. You know, if you went to apply for a job right now, they say that you're a little too old for this position. We have uh, other needs at this particular time. Oh. <laughs> They'll say to you that we've got a great position. You can work at Walmart. You can be an executive of a company for 45 years, but they think that your best years are behind. So we say to you, we believe that the rest of your life should be the best of your life, so let's build residual income together. Yay! Viva la baby boomers! <laughs> so why do some people not come to the event? Why do some people not promote the events? Why did some of you have people that didn't come? So I want you to tell me, what are the things that you hear for why people didn't come to Cleveland? What did they tell you? Didn't have the money. Didn't have the time. Kids. School. Husband. A football game. Pause for a second. Hold on a second. Your husband doesn't want you to make residual income. I'm not Dr. Phil, but maybe we just need to talk to homeboy and say, look, <laughs> baby, I know we got married, but I have a debit card, and you have a debit card. Mine has my name, yours has your name. I'm just changing the number to my account. <laughs> you like your account? Maybe you're proud of me. I need a couple more comments. Sorry. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> That'll be edited later, I'm sure. <laughs> That'll be edited later. We hear the same thing, I don't have money. So someone say, I don't have the money. Just say all of you, I don't have the money. Let me give you what to say when you hear, I don't have the money. Never listen to what you hear. What you're hearing is not what they're saying. What they're really saying is I'm scared. Mm. Say to me, I don't have the time to go. I don't have the time to go. That's not the truth. That's the words coming out of their mouth. But behind the words coming out of their mouth is, I'm scared. I don't believe. So when someone says to me, say it again, I don't have the money. I don't have the money. John, I understand you don't have the money. This is things that you want to write down. These are moments you want to record. John, I understand you don't have the money. Why do you think I'm talking to you? Wow. What are you doing talking to me? Because if I asked you to come to the event last year, you would have said you didn't have the money. Six months from now, I asked you to come out and see the event, you would have said you don't have the money. So if we don't break the cycle, how are we going to ever create the money? So I need you to register for Long Beach. Yeah. Tell me, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. 
Mary, why are you here talking to you? That's what I'm talking to you. Because I understand you don't have the time. A year ago, if I called you up, you tell me you didn't have the time. Six months from now, if I call you doing what you're doing, you're going to tell me you don't have the time. Five years from now, I'm going to talk to you, you're going to tell me you don't have the time. So why don't we break the cycle, create residual income, because residual income gives you time. I need you to register for Long Beach. <laughs> tell me my husband won't let me go. My husband won't let me go. Yours will. <laughs> I'm going to give you a Debbie Davis. I had a guest come to a meeting once. Miss Debbie Davis said this to my guest. This is a, this is a Debbie. When she said, I was like, he's got weak. She said, honey, we were born alone. We're going to die alone. And I was in the middle of the choice. I was like, Whoa! <laughs> Magnificence. Like it's like, you're right. He never supported. <laughs> Whatever their thing is that they're saying to you, the real thing is fear. That's what it really is. Fear, scarcity, but don't have the money. Doubt, I don't think I can get off work. Anxiety, I, I've never done anything like this before. Hesitation for my husband, my spouse, whatever that thing is. It all is in that wheel of fear. There's a cycle, and they're always, people are in that cycle. They're, they don't know they're in the cycle, but they're in the cycle. Fear, doubt, worry, hesitation, anxiety. Then, fear, doubt, anxiety, hesitation, everything. Scared, 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 scared. Yeah, here's, a, here's something that I heard long ago when someone said to me I didn't have the money. I said, look, you don't have the money, that's fine. But I went to an event, Mr. Corey Anderson said something in event. He said, you don't have the money, that's fine, but you can't fall off the bottom. <laughs> so I said that to my guests, I was like, you can't fall off the bottom? And they're like, you're right. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this works. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what it comes down to. I need to help you have belief, and I can't help you have belief in the living room, at the Starbucks. I need you to be here to have the belief, because here's where the energy is. Here's where you're ready to take action. Here's where you're predicting your own outcome. You see, instead of getting in your car and putting in the GPS and ending up somewhere without thinking, because it says right turn, left turn, instead of having somebody else, some other machine, dictate your final destination, you're in control, you're steering. And sometimes when you're doing that, sometimes we forget that you may know a better way. I've seen people take the longer way because the GPS said to go that way. And you're like, look, that's not right. But you go that way anyway, knowing you know a better way. And we're saying this is a better way. It's not the only way, but it's a better way than a lot of other people's way to so even come our way today and register for Long Beach. Here have had events. You've seen us go to events. You've seen us play the highlight videos. Well, you're not out, you're not watching the highlight video today. You're in the highlight video. At the end of the training today, Mr. Provenzano's done. You're going to be in the highlight video. You need to speak well of the speakers, edify the environment that HCS has. You need to remind them of the reason why. A young lady said to me, "I can't. My I have young kids." I said, "That's exactly why you need to be in Cleveland because you have young kids." And young kids will be older kids that need mommy to be in a great financial place. But if you're not in a great financial place, doing what you're doing, but you know you want more, then let's go to the environment where more is possible. I put people on the phone all the time with other leaders to have them tell their stories about what this ancient environment at the International Trading Place has done for them and their families. It's powerful what happens in this environment.
is unlike any I've ever experienced, but you have to be non-negotiable. I always believe that at the end of the day, somebody in the conversation has to believe at a higher level. If you believe they don't have the money, if you believe they don't have the time, if you believe they can't make it because of work schedule, if you believe all of that, then that's your conversation that you're putting onto them. And everybody buys into the easy path. The number one reason why is because a person is going to invent your symbols because of lack of value. Someone told me yesterday, this, and I can't make it a better, that an important um, project in school. I said, let me ask you a question. If Asin was going to stroke you a check for $100,000 to be in Long Beach, they, they were like, <laughs> school's got to wait. <laughs> I was like, isn't that interesting? Yeah. And they looked at me like, well, what are you saying? <laughs> so isn't it interesting your perspective on things? That with the guaranteed number, you give a guaranteed commitment. Mm. But with the non-guaranteed number, which could be more or less potentially for you long term than the number I just gave you, you give a non-guaranteed commitment. You're waiting for someone to give you a guarantee before you commit. And I'm saying you need to commit so you get your guarantees. You said, me, I want to be a millionaire. The big man in the decisions. You said, I want to be free. Make freedom for the decisions. Don't talk to me about your work schedule for the same job you're trying to get out of. Well, I gotta get out of work, but I gotta work. <laughs> what is that? You don't, you can't put one, one, and one together. Is if I'm in Germany, it's still. If I'm in Japan, it's still one plus one. If we don't speak the same language, we'll be. So I want to be free. But all the free people talking, I'm not going to go see them. <laughs> oh, how about this? I'm here in Cleveland now. I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. I'm smelling my freedom. <laughs> I'm about to take over the world. But I'm going to for Long Beach next week. Anyone can go to the gym one day. Anyone can go to the gym one day. Everyone can go to the gym one day. You can work hard at the gym. You can go 10 hours in that gym one day. I'll see you rolling around the next day in pain. <laughs> and because you hurt, you can't make the next day. So congratulations, you made it to Cleveland. Is that the best you got? No. Mm. There's a capacity we all have. And yeah, I understand that my posture may be strong. But my posture wasn't always strong. Thank God I had mentors like Mr. Solomon that had strong posture. They were willing to not listen to my excuses. We live in a world that's so filled with excuses. Oh my God, they have, people have like a bag of excuses like Santa Claus has presents. <laughs> Just whipping out excuses. Don't have the time. Don't have the money. Wife says no. No shortages of excuses. <laughs> but when people give you those excuses, you need to have posture. You need to remind them of why they're doing this. You need to relate to that person. You need to edify the event, edify everything. You see, most people stand up, but they don't stand up straight. <laughs> you see them standing in front of you, and they're standing in front of you, but their spines are crooked. Because their language is crooked, because their commitment capacity is crooked. 
and they look at you and they have crooked based conversations and someone needs to come and make an adjustment and it's either going to be you or life either you will help them adjust or life will adjust them mm. and you know the people that life's adjusting you know their stories already it's not going so well because no one was willing to get with that person and have a real conversation. Because everybody wants to be liked. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be popular. And instead of saying, you need to get your behind the Long Beach, you're like, I understand your scenario. I was there too. <laughs> oh, isn't it terrible? <laughs> oh. I remember working up with a trainer, and he told me to do something. I said, I said, I don't know that, that I can physically do that. He said, but you don't know that you can't do it. You do know that you're capable of doing it. So why don't you just do it? And I did the thing he told me to do. He's like, see, isn't it amazing when you shut your mouth and take action? Wow. We, by the time we meet you at an arena, we're looking at you. We're seeing you in your nice outfits. We're seeing you, but we're not seeing all the things coming with you. Mm. We're not seeing all that baggage, all that emotional hoarding you've been doing for 10, 15, 20 years. We're not seeing that baggage. We're, we're talking to you. When you're telling us you can't do something, we're not understanding why. We're not realizing that you're hoarding. And we're, who's ever seen that show about hoarders? They don't see a problem. They're like, I know that pen's here somewhere. <laughs> hey, do you want to tease up a little bit? What? Okay, what up? What do you mean? You want to just, maybe we should just move some of this stuff out. No, no, no. Everything here is important. Everything here is important. I'm used to not having money. I'm used to not having time. I'm used to my spouse telling me what to do. I'm used to not making adult-based decisions. Mm. I'm used to not going when I, where I want, when I want. I'm used to all of this. Don't clean it up. This is my comfort zone. It's not your comfort zone. It is your normal. Because holding on to things that do not give you new life there's nothing godly in that. There's nothing, there's nothing godly in that. God does not live in that. That's all the stuff people have been piling on to you, telling you about you your whole life. Mr. Provenzano says that you have to give up to go up. And when I came to Asian men, I had baggage. My baggage had baggage. My luggage had luggage. Well, I've never done this. You know, my parents passed away when I was young, and this happened to me, and that happened to me, and I slept in a park, and I slept in a car, and blah, 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 blah. I brought all that baggage to the arena. And in three days, I said, I'm going to be free from this company. Three days. What if my sponsor not fought for me to go? But here's what I said that day, what I'm going to say to you right now. At that point, that moment in time, I said, there will never be a thing that will stop me from ever getting to an Asian International Training event. Nothing. I came to a bench sleeping in friends' room. I came to a bench with no money in my pocket, but I said, I am committed. You see, because I can't expect Asian to give what I'm not willing to give, which is a mutual commitment. And I said, I don't care how it works, I'm going to get to an event. I remember going to an international training event. I remember renting a car and sleeping in the car that I rented. But no one knew it. Why? Because I was committed. Now you see this up here, 
You see all this stuff. You see accolade stage walking. You see all that stuff. You didn't see the car. You see, the car got me to the stage. Some of you need to get out of your car to get to this stage. Some of you are in your cars right now. They're winds. You see, here's the thing about a wind. A small wind will take your hat off your head when you're walking outside. A bigger wind can sway a tree. Wind that comes too heavy can have an airplane not be able to take off or land early. But these are all earthly things. That wind base is an earthly thing. But there was a man named Theodore von Karman. And Theodore von Karman was an amazing man. He said, at what point do we leave the Earth's atmosphere and go to the line that would be out of space? And he figured out it was 62 miles. That at 62 miles straight up, you will leave what is considered the Earth's atmosphere. And you'll be on that line that takes you to outer space. Now here's the thing about outer space. And by the way, that's the Carmen line. Here's the thing about outer space. There are no winds up there that will take that hat off of your head, sway the breeze of the tree, or make the airplane change its course. You see, the wind that takes the hat off your head could be like right above your head. The wind that sways the tree could be right at the level of the tree. The wind that's moving the airplane, obviously much higher. But yet when you go high enough, the wind isn't there. When you go across that Carmen line at 62 miles, Here's my point. Everything that's small can move you. Everything that's medium size can move you. Anything can move you when you don't cross that line of vision. You see, in order to see who we really are, your vision has to be so high that all the things going by you right now don't matter. I don't have the money in my account. That doesn't matter. My friends and family tell me I'm crazy. That doesn't matter. That wind that's blowing at me, I'm not moved by that wind. You're not gonna make big money. I'm not moved by that wind. And you telling that to me motivates me. And as you're talking to me, your breath smells. I'm not moved by that wind. <laughs> Because my vision has, has, see, my vision has left this planet. You're, you're, you're running around down here. I'm up there. You can't even, you can't even see me. I'm floating above with my vision. But my vision came at the International Training Event. How about yours? When did your vision show up? Was it on the airplane getting here? No. Was it at the Saturday training? No. Was it in a coffee shop lunch? No, 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 no. Was not, it was here. So if this is where you cross that line, if this is where your vision goes to that next level, if this is where you can help people take their vision to the next level, why don't you all just commit now for Long Beach? Why are you going to procrastinate? The website, acnreg.com. I want you to grab your cell phones right now. Grab them. Pull those cell phones out. And go to acnreg.com. I want you to register with us. Now, everyone doesn't have to go. Not everyone has to go to the Nationals. You're not forced to go. Is that requirement in your ideal agreement? But how can you tell me you want to be successful? How can you tell me you want to help people, but you can't even talk to yourself to get across the country? How are you going to be free and you can't talk to yourself to go on? I'm going to be free though. Everyone that's already registered, hold your phones up. Love you, you already do it.